All right, so welcome to the second lecture of our cell division, replication division uh, series. So as promised, I said the next video we would break down mitosis into its individual stages and see what is going on in each stage. All right, so let's take a closer look. So we've talked a little bit about um, interphase, which is all the stages preparing the cell for mitosis, right? So of the cell cycle, interphase accounts for 90% of the time, all right? So if you think 100% is the cell's life, 90% of its life is spent in interphase. The nucleus is well-defined and bound by the nuclear membrane, which we can see in this picture right here, right? Nuclear membrane. As you can see, it's right there. It's that whole little light purple section. Outside of the nucleus are two centrioles, okay? And you can see those in the yellow right up here. Their function is to organize the microtubules into a spindle. They will begin to move apart as spindle microtubules grow out of them. Now, this is not a process you need to know in extreme detail, is how the tubules and spindles form. I just want you to know that these are the things that are going to help the cell pull itself apart into two new cells. All right? So we can see here's the nucleolus in this picture. This is all of the chrom chromosomes. They're really thick and condensed. All right? So in G1 phase of interphase, there's a period of intense biochemical activity. As we stated in the last lecture, the cell doubles in size and the enzymes, cytoplasm, cytoplasmic organelles, and other molecules double in number. It just starts making more and more and more cell machinery. Okay? The chromosomes have then duplicated during the S phase and they appear as a jumbled mass of fibers. That would be this hot spaghetti mess all up in here, okay? They have not yet condensed into individual chromosomes that we saw that looked like two little sticks together, all right? So during the S phase, we see that it is duplicated, but not condensed, all right? Last but not least, in G2 phase, the cell assembles the special structures needed for cell division, which would be the centrioles and things like that. So remember, interphase includes the G1, S, and G2 phase, and it is the period of time preceding mitosis. Okay? That's what we covered in the last lecture. So now we need to know mitosis has four main stages. Okay? Prophase metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, or as we like to remember them, of course, PMAT, okay? Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. PMAT is just a way to help you remember the four steps. So prophase in early prophase, the chromosomes coil and thicken, and they become distinct from one another. They are now visible under the microscope, right? And we can see them. They look like these little stick things, right? Like that. The nucleolus actually disappears. And the chromosomes are doubled throughout their length. So now there's two copies of everything. Each half of the double chromosome is called a chromatid. And the chromatids are connected by a centromere. All right, so you can see here are the chromatids connected by a centromere. Okay, the little purple things. The centrioles separate and start moving to opposite ends, which you can see in the little yellow picture right there. And a spindle made of microtubules begins to form. So there are the 
centrioles and the spindles made of microtubules. In late prophase, okay, we see that the nuclear membrane fra fragments and the tubules invade the nuclear area and the spindle is completely formed. So now there's these fingers on either side reaching in, getting ready to pull all of the cell apart. The spindle is a structure that will help to separate the chromosomes. During prophase, the pairs of chromatids become attached to the fibers of the spindle. As we can see here, okay? They form a spindle and they start attaching to all of these chromatids. The centrioles have moved to opposite poles, forming the spindles as they go. So that's going to be the pulling force of that daughter cell, and this is going to be the pulling force of this daughter cell. In metaphase, the centrioles are now at opposite sides of the cell, okay? North pole, south pole. And the spindle fibers will push and pull the chromosomes so that they all line up at the center of the cell. And we can see these little uh, spindles are attached to each centromere. So now we see this nice, pretty line in metaphase, okay? We call this the metaphasal plate. This, when you think metaphase, that's what you need to think. All the chromatids are lined up. Anaphase. The centromeres divide and the chromatids move to the opposite sides of the cell. So when you think anaphase, you need to think they're separating, all right? Just like this. We can see the chromatids are being pulled to the opposite sides and those microtubules are shortening them and pulling them into opposites. So we can see half of the chromatids are going to go to the south pole, half the chromatids to the north pole. By the end of anaphase, the two ends of the cell have equivalent and complete sets of chromosomes. So now, this side, well, if you're a human, would have 46 chromosomes, and this side would have 46 chromosomes. Okay, the, the doubles have now been split up, so now each one has a complete copy of all the DNA necessary. Telophase. This is when the new nuclear membrane begins to form. So you can kind of see it right there. It starts to return, and the nucleolus starts to return, and the cell begins to pinch in. And this pinch is called a cleavage furrow, to be specific, all right? And the end result is two cells that are exact copies of each other, okay? Kind of like a bubble, it just pinches in half, and now you have two bubbles. So let's see if you can name these phases. Take a moment and um, take a look at them and see, hopefully... Uh, some of them really stick out to you. Okay, all the ones are prophases. All the twos are metaphases. Which you can tell because they, right, they're all in a line just like this. All the threes are anaphases because they are separate, right? Anaphase, you see them separating out. And all the fours are telophase. You can see the little bubble pinching in on these ones. Okay, and they almost look like they're two separate ones. And five, anything labeled five, when it's just acting like a normal cell, like this one, would be an interphase. So let's practice identifying the phases. All right, what would this be? Think to yourself, what would this be? Hopefully you guessed it, metaphase, very good. And here's another example of metaphase. What about this one? What do we think this one would be? 
You can see that the chromatids are separating. So whenever you think separating, you should automatically think anaphase. Okay, that would be a picture of anaphase, which also looks kind of like this. How about this step? This should be telophase. It should be kind of obvious because it looks like it's forming two new cells. So telophase looks like two. You can think of the T's that go together. And how about this picture? We see the spindles look like they're starting to form with the centrioles. It looks like there's copies of the DNA. So this would be prophase. And we know it's prophase because there's already duplicates of the DNA. So it has to be the start of division. How about this one? Everything's lined up. Very good. Metaphase. Okay, so our last uh, part of cell division is its own step called cytokinesis. And in cytokinesis, at the end of mitosis, two nuclei have been formed, and each nucleus has an identical set of chromosomes. So really, cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. It, is, it usually occurs at the same time as telophase. Sorry, let me give you another second there. So this usually happens at the same time or a little bit after telophase. Cytokinesis in animals, specifically in animal cells like us, we see this cleavage furrow pinches the membrane inward until it's separated into two new cells. All right? However, see how that just is going to separate into two new bubbles? It's different in plant cells. Okay? In plant cells, it is not possible for the cell to pinch inward because of the rigid cell wall. So instead, in plants, a cell plate forms midway between the two nuclei, and the plate continues to form until the cell is separate, um, is two separate cells. So it just essentially builds a wall. So animal cells pinch in half, plant cells divide themselves with a wall. So overall, the process of mitosis takes between 30 minutes and two hours. So as your skin, let's say, is replicating itself, right, because your skin cells die and they slough off, new ones are being made every 30 minutes to two hours. We know that one parent cell or one mother cell is turned into two identical daughter cells and that the identical daughter cells are also identical to the mother cell. All right, so we've talked about mitosis. We understand the process that leads to cell division. So the last two important things you need to know about mitosis is what are the results of mitosis, okay? In unicellular plants and animals, it results in new offspring by asexual reproduction, okay? This is how amoebas, for example, make babies. In multicellular organisms, it results in the growth and repair of the organism. If you cut your arm, right, and it starts bleeding, then you get a scab, mitosis has to occur so that new skin cells can bridge that gap and your arm will heal. The importance of mitosis is that the two new cells are exact duplicates, right? You want your arm to heal by creating more skin cells. You don't want new like brain cells there, that would be weird and gross. And it ensures that the new cells will be able to carry out the same functions as the mother cell. It's a means of replacing, right? That way we're able to heal our bodies or as skin dies, we're able to make more skin so that we don't just end up as skinless people as we get older and older, right? So it's really important because it's really a regenerative regenerative uh, property that uh, mitosis is for us. So overall, um, that is mitosis in a nutshell. Um, this is the second lecture of this series, and 
once you think you have this under command, uh, then you can go ahead and move on to the third lecture, which we're going to talk about cell uh, regulation, okay? And what happens when cell regulation is not occurring properly.